Welcome to Steam Fest. This is Math Day at Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center. So Anna, we have a diagram here of how we can talk about gravitation and trajectory yeah. and speed. What can, what do you know about this? Yeah, so one of the things that when we first started space exploration in the 1960s that we had to figure out was how stuff works in space because there's not gravity like we have here and so that's where math comes in. Mathematicians had to figure out the trajectory or the path that something would take as it's going through space and how gravitational pulls of nearby planets would affect that. So that's what we're going to demonstrate here today. If we, so the way we have this set up is as if there is a gravitational pull. Obviously there is always here on Earth a gravitational pull, but we are simulating this gravitational pull in space. But to start with, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend there's no gravitational pull. So we're gonna pull these blocks out. Now, if I take a marble and just make it go, always gonna go in pretty much a straight line, right? So that's no gravity. So if we were to add gravity, it's going to change the trajectory, the path. Let's say that there's just a little tiny bit of a gravitational pull. So I really love that y'all have chosen auburn colors. Or eagle. <laughs> so we've added a little bit of gravitation by increasing the height on this side. Yeah, so we've got a little bit of gravi gravity. Oh, and we've got a little bit of an arc that's starting. Okay. So now we've got lots of gravity. Let's see how that is gonna interfere with the trajectory. So let's put a little more paint on a little bit more. I'm gonna do green because this blue is kind of thin. Oh, so we've got yep. a very sharp turn. And if you notice, this marble is gonna take pretty much that same turn every time. So orbits around there. Yeah. And so if we were in space, that would be the gravitational pull from Earth or another planet, how much the satellite or the object weighs, and that's gonna affect all of the different directions that it can go in. That is where the mathematicians are very, very important. And that's what people like Katherine Johnson did. So we have the different um, speeds, the, yep, the, um, the density and mass of whatever object mm -hmm. that it's coming in contact, because that changes the, um, the gravitational pull yep. of each one of them. And so all of those things have to be factored into formulas to calculate that for whatever uh, work we're trying to do. Yep, and it has to be consistent. You can't just put an object up into space and hope it stays, especially if you're putting thousands People. and thousands of dollars into the equipment and then it just floats away and so they have to be able to make sure that the math is not only what they were expecting but consistent. Same happens with when something is coming back into Earth's orbit, the landing spot. If they're landing in an ocean you want people there to pick them up so that's where the math comes in in terms of consistency. Absolutely. Thanks Anna for walking through this um, project with us. No problem. To do this experiment at home, you'll need some sort of tray and you can tape your piece of paper to your tray. Then we used a paper towel roll and taped it to the corner of our tray and we propped it up with a box. This is the position for zero gravity. To test out the different gravitational poles, you can use something to prop up the corner of your tray. This will make different levels and different heights for your gravitational pull. Have fun testing this out and thanks for joining STEAM Fest. Join us to learn about three cutting edge women in the field of mathematics and follow us on Facebook to tune into other fun STEAM Fest activities and biographies. Learn more at WenatcheeValleyMuseum.org.